During the first chapters, we will examine how the most important costing-related master data items are maintained in the system. There is a lot of different costing-related master data, but when you understand the function of all the master data elements, you pretty much understand how costing and controlling generally works in SAP. Without further ado, let's log into the system. We can start our journey by examining cost elements, which are the base of the whole controlling module. As you remember, there are two types of cost elements, primary cost elements and secondary cost elements. We start by examining one of our primary cost elements. I have already created this cost element in the system, so we can open transaction KA03 to display it. The cost element we will be examining is for the direct labor costs. We see that the cost element category for this cost element is 1, which stands for a primary cost element. Let's also take a look at the actual general ledger account that is linked with this cost element. I go to transaction FS03. I press the Find button and insert the account number. After finding the correct account, I double-click it. Here we can see all the settings maintained for this account. If we press Edit Cost Element, we can confirm that this GL account is linked with the primary cost element sharing the same account number. You can create a primary cost element using a transaction KA01. When you create a primary cost element, you will first enter the same number as the GL account for which you want to create the cost element for. Make sure to select Category 1 as the cost element type. When you are creating secondary cost elements, you can select any number you want. It is advisable to always use a specific naming convention for the secondary cost elements so you can distinguish between primary and secondary cost elements by just looking at their numbers. When you are creating a cost element, Make sure its validity period starts from the beginning of the fiscal year, so you can plan your costs for the whole year. Next, let's take a look at one of our secondary cost elements. This cost element is the credit side cost element of our manufacturing cost centers. We see that the category type for this cost element is 43. This category is used for secondary cost elements that are linked together with activity types. Let's also have a look at another secondary cost element. This is the cost center used to allocate maintenance and management costs to the manufacturing cost centers. The cost center category for this cost center is 42. This category is used for secondary cost centers that allocate costs to other cost centers using assessment method. Let's have a look at one more secondary cost element. This cost element is used to allocate admin cost using a costing sheet. A cost center category 41 is maintained for this cost element. Cost elements can also be grouped together using cost element groups. Groups can make referencing cost elements quicker in many transactions. We will later see what I mean by that. Let's go to transaction KAH2 to check one cost element group I have already created. This cost element group includes all cost elements on the debit side of our manufacturing cost centers. If I would like to add one more cost element to this group, I would first click the name of the group and then the cost element button. Cost center groups are created using KA. H1 transaction. Now it's time for you to start creating the cost elements we will be needing for our costing scenario. All the cost elements we need are listed in the Excel file which you hopefully have already opened. Primary and secondary cost centers are created using different transactions. Primary cost centers are created using KA01 but secondary elements are created using KA06. As I mentioned before, select the first day of the current fiscal year as the first validity date so you can do your cost planning for the whole year. Note, 
that many of the primary cost elements might have already been created in the IDES environment you are using. In this case, the system tells you that a cost element already exists, but all the secondary cost elements need to be created by you. Have fun working with the cost elements. In the next chapter, we will be discussing cost centers, which are just as important as cost elements.